Where do you want me to start? We had been in country for about a month. It was really late at night, and we were going down a road called IED Alley. Tyler was in the vehicle behind me, and I remember I got this real strange feeling just a microsecond before the explosion. It was almost like being underwater. The feeling of the pressure, sound is really muffled, and I was in this thick center of the blast. When I was in the war, I almost lived constantly in a state of fear. I couldn't easily name a single day that I was in Iraq that I didn't get shot at, that I didn't have something explode next to me. There was a lot of things that we did in Iraq that are hard to live with. There was a situation where there were two little girls that got killed by me and the individuals that I was serving with. They were, they were six and seven years old. But there was a lot of other incidents. I mean, I've seen farmers get mowed down by machine guns in their fields for doing nothing other than farming. I mean, just death, senseless death. And seeing that senseless death, I think, would make anybody think about the world differently. My mother was pretty concerned. She, um, she was the one that always stressed to me growing up, don't do drugs, say no to drugs. And when I told her that I was in a study to take ecstasy for the PTSD issues that I was having, she was, she was pretty blown away. I think she might have thought I was kidding first. So any questions or concerns or thoughts on your mind before we start? Well, I hadn't been really anxious about this at all, but I think this morning it's starting to make me a little bit anxious. I mean, not in a bad way, but just kind of wondering what, sure. yeah, what I'm getting into. Sure. Yeah. I took the MDMA early in the morning on the first session. Then I just started thinking about things. It was uh, it's like a floodgate of thoughts just opened and all of a sudden I was processing things and thinking about things in perspectives that I hadn't considered before. I'm wondering whether this might be a good time to go back inside for a little bit and just kind of be there with all that we've been talking about. Not so much trying to figure out but just see what else you might discover about it. At the end of the first session it had really struck home with me that I didn't have compassion for myself anymore. I viewed myself almost as a monster. So I, um, I worked with that and I was able to connect with a place that I really appreciated myself again and I felt nothing but compassion for myself. And it was at that point that I think the healing really began. Tyler is my friend that I was in the Marine Corps with. I met him as soon as I get to the Fleet Marines. And he was really the first person that I started hanging out with. We had a lot in common. And then when we were in Iraq, we were just by each other's side all the time. Everyone's got a battle buddy, and Tyler was mine. I did keep in touch with him when he went back to Iraq for the second time, and I was back in the United States. It was really challenging because I knew he was going through a lot of things over there that we didn't experience the first time together. He would tell me about Marines that would um, get killed in IED blast, and then it was his job to put their body parts into bags. And I know those things really affected him. They would affect anybody. The MDMA 
clinical study was really effective. And once I realized how beneficial it was for me, I started referring friends that I knew in the area to go to the study. But if there was one person that I needed it the most, it would have been Tyler. But because he was in Florida, I couldn't get him into it. So I found another way. So oh, good old boy. What's going on, Pat? Good to see you. Hey, you still got it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So how was your drive coming down here? My drive was, it was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the traffic wasn't bad. It's good to fucking see you. Man. It's good to see you too. God damn. Yeah. It's been a long time, man. Yeah, years, man. <laughs> for that first, that first patrol we went on outside of the gate, for you, we went into condition one. <laughs> You're like the, the point leader of the squad. You're like, dead dog on the left. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it had a bomb in it. <laughs> From everything I had heard, I mean, I You're thought... like, dead dog on the left. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Staff Sergeant Gones being like, planning you don't look so good. Drink some water. I'm just like, I'm scared as fuck. <laughs> That's why I don't, you know what I mean? That shit was crazy, man. The second tour was really fucked up. I saw way more mutilation on that one. And saw, um, yeah, it's bad shit, you know? You know, when you went down to Charleston with me, you got to hear about that study I was going through. Yeah. And yeah. so, there's underground therapists that use MDMA and psychotherapy. So I found one. It took some work, but I've already talked with her. And she's agreed to help you, to work with you. Then well, if you're behind it, I trust you. I'm behind it 100%. I trust you, man. I've already trusted you in my life. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. I'll do it. The therapeutic use of MDMA is different than the therapeutic use of medical marijuana and a lot of drugs that are available by pharmaceutical industries for psychiatric indications. MDMA is a drug that we actually administer only a few times in the course of a therapeutic process. And at the end of the therapy, they're hopefully strengthened to the point where they don't need drugs at all. What's nice about MDMA is not only are you relaxed, but you're awake. You know, in psychiatry, we have a lot of medicines that can make you relaxed, but they also make you sedated. You know, you take something like Xanax or Valium or Clonopin, Ativan, all these things that lower anxiety, but they also lower your consciousness. In all of psychiatry, there's nothing like this. This MDMA is really unique, and it's, it's uniquely situated to help in a psychotherapy session. What we've learned is that MDMA reduces activity in the amygdala where fear-based emotions are processed. So when we talk about post-traumatic stress disorder, people are burdened by things that happened in the past, and so under the influence of MDMA, with the reduction of activity in the amygdala, the fear tags to emotions are reduced, the feelings and the memories come back from the trauma, and then with the enhancement of the activity in the frontal cortex, people are able to put things in context, and they're able to build new neural pathways to these memories, and then it's recreated without the fear attached to it. So one MDMA session can fundamentally reorder and rewire people's brains. My grandmother always taught me that I should at least walk a mile a day. And so we used to come here and walk around the lake. And uh, along the way, we'd feed the ducks. I'm like the godfather here. This is a communion. <laughs> Good 
Nigel and I were sitting behind a seven ton one time and uh, the tire went flat because of a fucking bullet coming through there. And then all of a sudden we hear about our FO that's out there on the hill. He got shot through the arm, you know, stuff starts becoming real, real quick. And uh, it was very scary because we were pinned down and we couldn't do anything. And so it was kind of like just, you're sitting ducks. No irony, but I mean, it's just, that's how it felt, you know? Like, it was fucked up. You know, when young men die in wars, you know, I remember reading this newspaper article about when Fallujah got overran again, and we were there. We were right there. And you know, there's like blood cells over there in the dirt. So these guys, that are dead. They were like 18 years old, man. And so why am I sitting here? I've tried to take my life several times. And I have not, I have not succeeded. And I, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to die unnaturally you know like it's like those guys over there like I remember one time these guys got blown up and we had to go over there like I remember like sticking my foot in a I thought it was just a heap of ash and like I moved my foot around and it was all pink this was some guy's like thigh or I don't know it was a piece of a person's body, you know? And we killed a lot of them too. A lot of them. You know, and I don't know how their families feel about that. I mean, all those fields we just sat in, these motherfuckers were just farmers. I'm sorry to keep living, I mean, he's, that's my brother I was with over, you know? And I mean, Nigel's my brother in a lot of other ways, too, but over there, we saw a lot of fucked up shit, you know, and it, it, it takes a while to process that type of stuff. The main thing, the problem I have, Emmanuel, is just the, the dead kids, you know, I mean, the, the, the dead Marines, you know, their families and stuff, we came back, he can tell you, we had to sit there in those ceremonies and, like, these parents and like wives and stuff are lined up against you. You gotta go shake their hands. And that shit fucks with me, you know? Like, I just have always had these dreams about murder and violence. And I, I don't know how to stop it. Defensiveness that is characteristic of PTSD, which for me and a lot of other veterans I know keeps therapy from being an effective way to resolve issues going on. It eliminates that defensiveness. It, it eliminates that inner critic. You're able to actually have a very effective therapeutic session. Yeah, but you went through an FDA one. I'm gonna be out there and taking it illegally. 
Well, who's giving it to you? Yeah, where's the this provision? This obviously is not VA approved, right? Oh, it's not approved at all. If people What's the name of this drug? MDMA. I'm sorry? MDMA. Mm -hmm. And I do not know what that stands for. Neither do I. My familiarity with it is just from like the, honestly, like the club scene and stuff playing music and being around bars a lot especially like in college towns like Gainesville the thing is for me is like I mean I've, I've been good friends with Tyler now for like five years and I'm excited for anything at this point that I think might help him you know like turn that next step absolutely mm -hmm. well let me ask you this mm -hmm. are you solo in this or is this a group support thing will there be more than just you involved in this endeavor have they warned you about side effects the fact that it's illegal might get you arrested, that could be a very big problem. If the drug is illegal, both of them are going to jail. Yeah. Did they talk to you about that? Yes. Yeah, is this going to make you so fearless that you would walk into a fire or in front of a bus? No. You still have your good reason when you're on the drug. It's not a drug where you would do things that you wouldn't normally do other than open up like emotionally and it's in a safe therapeutic environment so even though it is illegal i'm certain that the therapist would put tyler's good health above being discovered if anything were to come up there would be medical attention provided for him it wouldn't be a sort of a thing where they would just cart him out to an alley and dump him and hope that nobody discovered him. No, it wouldn't be like that. It wouldn't be like that. No. <laughs> no alley dumping. Bring out your dead. Bring out no your alley dead. dumping. Well, I can say I definitely am trepidatious for Tyler, but at the same time, like, and I mean, we all have, but like, I've seen him with alcohol. I've seen him, you know, fighting to stay sober, going and talking to people, going and talking to groups and stuff like that. Sometimes I can just tell he's exhausted. So illegal or not, like, I'm excited because it's, it's another fucking option. Which hopefully will end up in a paper that might get this stuff actually on the table above board. Well, I believe any help at all is better than none whatsoever. And just so long as you know what you're getting into, your friend here has experienced it. And as and far as is Tyler going to have support there? Yes, I'm going out with him. Oh, you'll be there? So he has somebody that he knows and he trusts by by his side. So you'll be there like for the duration of it? Hopefully the uh, that, that program makes sense. I'm done with this. I, I don't want to talk anymore. I'm... Shut off the... I don't want to talk about this shit no more. Are we cut? Let's cut for a bit. Cut. Cut. I'm exhausted. I fucking bore my heart today. I don't want to talk about this shit no more. I'm exhausted, Emmanuel. I'm, I'm emotionally exhausted. As I think about life's meaning and I sweat and fret and ponder Does the answer lie right here or is it way over yonder? Life is precious, life is short, it's no resource to squander So I drink myself a beer perchance to help my mind to wander I think of Jesus and the Buddha and the pyramids and such And that cowboy kind of wisdom that I've come to love so much So I put on some Grateful Dead, I open up another beer I start to see an auras and the answer comes quite clear I'll be a hillbilly hippie and a new age redneck And if you don't dig my karma, well I just don't give a heck I'll carry a crystal and a pistol in my pocket just for luck And put a piece through music sticker on the back of my pickup truck From the moment that I met the therapist, I felt a good vibrancy of their nature and I felt like that we were already going to get along good. And the more I talked to them, the more I could see how compassionate they were. They said they're going to give me 125 milligrams to start out with and then there's a 25 milligram booster that I have the option to take during the six hours if I feel like I need to. One concern I had about the therapy and I talked to the therapist about last night was I, I was concerned, well, what if I take this and I don't feel anything? And they said they've never had that happen before. I was up front with the therapist about my alcohol addiction. We, we discussed it for a while and they, they told me they thought it'd be better 
if I had, you know, just a beer beforehand because alcohol withdrawal, alcohol and I think uh, benzodiazepines are the two that you can die from, you know, so it's a very serious thing and plus it's also a very uncomfortable thing. Um, so the last thing we want when trying to heal is to be uncomfortable. So I'm having a beer before to um, just kind of take the take the edge off and not be shaken. I just don't want to be the guy still living in my hometown when you know I'm 40 years old. I would like to be in a metro area and you know you know maybe meet someone you know worth getting in a relationship with. And I don't know. I I'm. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. Hey, it's good to see you. My mind is spinning away again. I'm tangled and dangled above the flowers and the trees Getting stars in my hair Getting stars in my hair During the session, I talked about with the therapist behaviors that I've adopted since I've come back from the war. And while I was on MDMA, I was able to easily talk about those things and look at myself, or uh, be able to accept myself easier because there was no stress. I was not stressed at all. Any stress I'd ever had, it was all gone. And so I was able to sit in this therapy and just easily admit things that bother me and I, it, was, it was very relieving. I was able to realize accomplishments that I've achieved, not being too hard on myself. You know, I started I was like, oh, I've done this and I've done this and I've done this. And so that was very groundbreaking. The therapists were really encouraging just anything I wanted to talk about they or any second that I spoke they were just ready to listen so it was a the exchanges were something entirely different than I've ever experienced before in a therapy setting there was one thing I was telling them about and the therapist had me look at it a different way you know that's stuff I've never told any therapist that's what I'm saying it's something so embedded that I don't talk about it in therapy sessions, but it was the first thing I started talking, I was like, I have to get this, you know. The first two sessions I had, I noticed that I was able to sleep better and I've been able to utilize this tool. If I'm in a miserable spot in my life, trying to find something, a good memory, and be able to tell myself, that's you, you know, you've been there, you've had fun before. I think with doing MDMA, I've been able to, for one thing, forgive myself and uh, realize that life isn't this, doesn't have to be this big stressful event that it's, the only one that you know we have. I've also noticed too, when I get into my dark, you know, depressive type areas, suicide's not an option, as it used to commonly be.
again I'm tangled and dangled above the flowers and the trees Getting stars in my hair Getting stars in my hair